chemicals in your mind. What made, what, what made humble? Punks don't get turned, they get. Yo, today we're taking a look at sampling different sources into the VerseLab MV1. I will show you how to sample from your phone, your Mac, or the turntable, what cables I use, and my workflow, how I chop, and my settings. And with no further ado, let's dive into it. Step one, make sure your VerseLab have the latest firmware and your computer the latest drivers. And uh, if you don't, head over to Roland.com. If you miss the load up screen and you don't know what version you have, you can just hold down these two measure buttons and press load and you will see what version you have. And if you don't have the version up to date, go to Roland's website and download it. And also, when you're sampling from your iPhone, iPad or Mac, you will be using the PC input source Head over to the system by pressing the system button and uh, scroll all the way to the right where it says USB driver and it should say generic and if it says vendor just turn this control 3 knob and you need to power off and on your device once again. So if you're sampling iPhone, iPad or Mac make sure it says generic and you're good to go and now let's take a look at some sampling sources and some cables i got the new mark pt01 scratch i got my iphone a plus uh, my macbook pro and the cables just the standard rca with ts adapters and we also have for this tutorial just a regular breakout cable ts TS left to right into 3.5 millimeter um, TRS and standard USB cable and also this lightning cable um, we'll talk later about this one um, but yeah this is pretty much all you need to get sampling from whatever source you want so let's start with the turntable I got the new mark line out going to the line in on the verse lab and here I have just a regular drum track uh, let's clear this one the kick track and it says clear track yes and we don't want a tone track we want a drum kit track now let's head over to the input and see what we got it says mic in off uh, and that means it uses the line input and that's what we want right now for sampling the turntable and we have some other options like phantom power I don't have a microphone connected right now so and external level uh, and you can also record uh, internal sources inside the ME1 um, but I'm not gonna do that right now and after that you can go and check some other settings like this one right here record trigger it says enter and you can choose between clock and also threshold um, I'm not gonna mess with any of this but I prefer to have it on enter uh, due to the sampling technique I'm using um, it's much easier to control time to see if we have some signal um, by holding shift record and as you can see it says enter to record on the screen and let's I have some movement on on the meters right here and I'm pretty happy I can always normalize afterwards I will show you but yeah let's record this part enter here's a few options like start endpoint norm normalize and execute the normalize um, if you want to sample slice uh, you have some different options like hard mid and soft and it's not very efficient when it comes to s slicing melodic samples I think it's meant for drum tracks uh, to be honest uh, but you, you can chop with the slicing feature I'm not gonna mess with that right now I have the sample loaded all I have to do right now press the pad I want the sample to go 
and set sample and importing complete uh, and that's pretty much it I'm not gonna miss I'm not gonna edit the sample right away I'm I am going to record another slice so let's like so and I'm not gonna mess with the settings I'm just gonna press and import the sample and um, now that's done let's take another one let's take this one and let's take a fourth one Four sample chops, ready to go. I'm actually gonna show you one thing. Let's just flip this record right here and uh, let's do it. Let's record a longer sample. You can sample longer samples, but on the verse lab, it's not very efficient because you don't have a visual representation on the screen, what's going on. And it takes a while to dial in the start and end points. So the best way is to really pinpoint the exact parts you want. And I recommend you to listen to the track you're planning to sample before you even get started. So, um, that's my tip uh, when it comes to to sampling. Um, no matter if you're sampling from the turntable, your phone, computer, make sure you know the parts you want to sample and just pick those parts. Uh, it can be a bit tedious till you get into the flow of things, but once you have all your chops and if you only sample the parts you wanted, it's often not that much to trim and it goes pretty fast but before you start editing the samples do all the sampling first that's my tip after you sample something go through the options um, like I showed you uh, if you want to normalize and press the pad you want to set the sample hit OK and once that's done exit out and uh, yeah repeat the process how many chops you want now I have some chops and from here there are a few things I want to do um, so yeah let's start with pressing edit and a pad um, and you can mute the pad when it starts to play by pressing shift and play uh, now we're at the instrument edit uh, let's take a look inside here we have some different options like level and panning delay send reverb send but I'm not going to go in detail with all the features, all the parameters inside the instrument or the sample edit. I want to show you the quickest way to just get started. Uh, first off, we need to set all the chops in a mute group. So I'm going to pick mute group 1. Um, and so... Next up, we'll need to scroll to the voicing. Now it says multi, and it means you have multiple voices that can be triggered on a pad, and uh, that's not really what you want. You get this overlay effect, and um, for these type of samples, I don't want that, so let's put every single one in single mode. Now you maybe want to pitch the sample. Um, there's a few ways you can pitch the sample. Uh, you have inside the instrument edit, uh, you have something called uh, key offset. Uh, and you can also fine tune. So key offset. Uh, inside the instrument edit and you can also go into to the sample edit and here you have the 
fine tuning as well but here you can change the key when you're inside the instrument edit you can see which pad you're you're actually editing um, but if you go inside let's see the sample edit and I want to pitch this one and let's say I want to pitch this one as well and start messing with it it's not gonna change anything because you're still on the first one so when you're in the sam sample edit you need to back out and go back in so that's a little bit wonky but uh, besides that um, most of the edits you will be doing inside the instrument edit uh, except the chopping so let's get into chopping the, the samples um, start point and as I'm moving the value knob it move kind of slow slow increments but if I hold down shift moves a lot faster this will do for that one and need to exit out the next one pretty good actually didn't take that long and um, that's because I just picked the part I wanted nothing more nothing less when it comes to sampling choose the parts you want Bada bim bada boom. Here's my number one tip for making your life so much easier, and especially with working with samples. Um, I just made a quick drum loop. And if I start to play this sample, I actually need to pitch it to make it fit. If you have like 16 pads, uh, it's gonna take a while to get into the sample edit and key offset all all the all the chops um, so what we're going to do that makes everything so much easier is to program these control knobs and uh, how you do that you're in the sequence mode I have my kick track how you do it you hold down the edit button and and just scroll these knobs and here it says chorus tune and let's Nope, let's Nope, maybe it was six. And six feels kind of good, but let's, we have the fine tuning as well. Let's. What I have going on my knobs, I got a course, the course tune. I usually have, um, I usually have reverb send on the second one, and the third one, and this, this is something I don't get. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, but as I showed when I sample, I just picked a random, random one, uh, a longer sample, just so I can show you. This is something weird i don't know why it's happening i have my my pads set on full velocity 127 and this is what happened the sample starts to fade and that's definitely something i don't want so what you can do you can program one of these knobs um, let's see we have the decay and you set the K to max plus 63 and and once you've set it to 63 you don't need to actually th that's another thing if you change 
one of these parameters and want to switch it out to something else that setting you had before it will stay so let's say I I choose the cutoff uh, and do like this and I change it to something else uh, let's say I want I don't know uh, I want reverb send on that one it will still be using that cutoff till I go back and reset it so and let's say if I want to pitch down the drums as well I can have have it set to um, chorus tune as well yeah let's take a look at how you can sample from your phone let's start with the breakout cable it's very cheap also gonna use this headphone iPhone adapter pretty straightforward let's remove these and let's hook up left to the right breakout cable left right into this headphone and uh, let's head over to Spotify you don't have to change anything um, just go inside recording because uh, we have it set like we want it and um, yeah I'm just gonna play you a beat I made uh, for this project called Sample Clash Volume 1 and uh, let's sample myself like so put it in a mute group and just change the voicing to single and now that I have all the other chops I just need to let's sample from your phone with USB cable lightning cable just the standard USB cable lightning cable and let's go inside the input and uh, let's change this to PC let's head over to the recording and one yeah let's let's just do the computer where we're still on PC and let's see I have a thing loaded up on my Mac so let's record that complete I'm actually gonna Normalize this one, place it right there. Bada beam, bada boom, complete. Mute group one and the voicing single. So, there you have it. Pretty simple sampling from your computer, from the phone, and uh, and also I want to give a shout out to A. McGree for the next tip. If you don't fill up the 16 pads with samples, you can have one pad as a mute pad for cutting samples off when, um, when you're recording. Um, just go into one pad, um, head over to uh, the edit, press the pad you want to edit, instrument, uh, edit and just set the level down to zero and now you have like a mute pad if you play something and you want that sample to cut off mid or something shout out to a McRee and uh, go check out his sampling video 
um, I'll leave a link in the description. Oh, and another thing, quick about this lightning cable. You can use Roland Sendbeats to control a lot of parameters on the MV arranging. Um, you can use your phone, tablet, uh, computer, uh, but obviously you don't need a lightning cable uh, if you're using the computer. And by the way, Sendbeats is free. All you have to do is create a Roland Cloud account and download it for free and bada bing bada boom. So yeah, I'm gonna show you if you can see Sendbeats and here it says Verslab Editor and I can just hook up and from here and I got and I got a mixer as well. Um, And there's a lot of things you can set. Bit crusher. Yeah, you got a lot of, a lot of effects um, that you can control on your phone or tablet. You can also have you can also control them with these knobs. Like like this. Let's take the classic DJ FX looper. I hope you found this video helpful and let me know if there's something else you want me to make a video about and uh, yeah don't forget to leave a like if you did like it and um, yeah bada beam bada boom I'm out <laughs>